Like the principles of medicine, the principles of human behavior apply to people of all ages and dispositions, even to particularly difficult older adolescents and young adults. I was asked to speak to a group of at-risk high school students about the importance of self-management. These were students who were out of the mainstream of the general school population because of their behavior problems. For the most part, they came from unstable homes, and several had been the victims of abuse of one sort or another. In the course of the presentation, I was emphasizing the importance of building into our lives that which is enriching and ennobling, including such basic, common social graces as saying and doing nice things to other people, beginning with members of our own family, even unpleasant members of our own family. I kept trying to drive home the point that there are some basics that must be in place before anyone can begin to hope for happiness, with emphasis on saying and doing nice things to others. Building on some questions asked by the students and how to apply these basics in a family setting, even when there are unpleasant people around, I doubled my efforts by answering the students that, in the long run, positive, pleasant, and non-reactive interactions went out over negative, unpleasant, reactive interactions. But I emphasize that it takes time. Sitting directly in front of me was a student who was somewhat older than the others. He was nearly 20. His appearance suggested that he had lived a good deal of his life out of the mainstream. He raised his hand. Quote, This is a bunch of BS though he didn't say BS. If you want results, if you want your kids to behave, you've got to let them have it. End of quote. As he slammed a clenched fist into the palm of his hand, he went on, if my old man treated me the way you've been telling us, I wouldn't be here in this alternative high school. I'd be in prison. Again, with emphasis, he slammed his fist into his hand. I asked him to role-play with me, and he agreed. As he stood up, I was surprised at how tall he was. He towered over me. We created a scenario, one which represented a serious disagreement between me as his father and him. I told him he could do and say anything he wanted, except he couldn't hit me or spit on me. He agreed, and we began. He unleashed on me his anger and frustration. He swore and ranted and raved. It was quite a scene. At length, he exhausted his anger and stood before me, seething. Unemotionally, I said, I'm sorry you're upset, son. I can see you have some strong feelings about this. For a moment, he was taken aback. He expected me to lash back at him, but no dice. He quickly regrouped, assaulted me again with every verbally profane insult he could muster. It was really very dramatic. Again, I responded non-reactively. I simply and quietly said, Son, I am genuinely sorry that you're upset, and especially sorry that you have such cause for anger. But this is not an appropriate way to express that anger. By now, he was completely off guard. His third assault was weak and almost desperate. Then I said calmly, Son, although you are very angry, and perhaps for good reason, what is the appropriate way for a man your age to express that anger? The room was deathly quiet. He looked down at me with a mixture of confusion and wonderment. The anger drained out of his face. Even the color was gone. A few moments of silence passed. Then, in barely audible tones, he said, You know, that would work with me. Mom and Dad, it does work. Just plain being nice, laced with empathy, understanding, and non-reactive responding does work. <laughs> 